Christ. It was bringing huge institutions to their knees, and a lot of that was tied into derivatives. Well, that the latest edition of Frontline titled The Warning. Uh, it examines the type of legalized gambling that took down Wall Street briefly and continues to threaten the collapse of our entire American economy, although Wall Street has been resurrected and the casino has been put back in business, as you can see from Goldman and J.P. Morgan's earnings, uh, thanks to the taxpayer. It's something we all talk about a lot on this show. Uh, the derivatives are the gambling instrument. Think of that as your blackjack table. Between a bank's betting between each each other who can pay their bills not just each other but everybody in America who can pay their credit card bills these bets kept under the radar who could pay their mortgages which government can pay its bills they keep these markets in secret the version of financial reform passed recently by a House committee originally aimed to put again these blackjack tables of bets on who can pay their bills out in the open so we could all see the casino parlor but so far, even after what happened last year, even after $24 trillion were taken from the taxpayer to support the system, even in the wake of record unemployment moves, movement, uh, record foreclosures, period, still, our regulators are trying to keep the derivatives market uh, out of whack. Under the urging of President Clinton's economic working group way back when, uh, this casino was opened in the year 2000 by President Clinton. And these three men here, Arthur Levitt, Larry Summers, and Bob Rubin, they are featured in the frontline piece. You can see after they legalized the gambling, uh, you can see the explosion in the size of the gambling pit. $80 trillion uh, was the size of that gambling pit before the legalization under Clinton, again approved by Levitt, Rubin, and Summers, and the rules became he who can take the most risk in the casino makes the most money, and the downside goes to somebody else. Again, that 80 trillion market goes to 600 in a heartbeat because if you take more risk, you make more money. Senator Maria Cantwell sits on the Senate Finance Committee pushing to put this casino capitalism to an end and resurrect the investment culture that made America what it is today. Senator Cantwell, thank you so much. Also with us, Representative Bart Stupak uh, sits on the Energy and Commerce Committee pushing financial services for stronger reform. Uh, Representative Stupak will talk to you shortly. Uh, Senator Cantwell, uh, why is it that it is so hard to outlaw the casino that was legalized 10 years ago and so well outlined by Frontline? Well, I think people just don't understand what's going on, and that is what Wall Street bets on. They create what are really exotic uh, financial instruments that are very toxic, as we can now see. They can ruin our economy, and yet people don't understand how they work, and so they think that we shouldn't regulate them. Well, even in Las Vegas, when someone goes to the blackjack table, both the house and the player have to have capital behind their bets. But we allow Wall Street to continue to operate without the backing of those uh, securities that really make the financial system work and perform as a, as a regulated entity. Yeah, I, I want to look again at this chart that shows Wall Street compensation versus Main Street compensation. The Huffington Post did a great job in, in pulling this together. The law that legalized the casino gambling uh, was passed under Clinton by the three gentlemen I referenced advising President Clinton at the time uh, to have no regulation, no capital requirements for these so-called swaps, which are again the black, the bets. Uh, we can see 9-11, we get the big push down, uh, which supersedes everything through 2001. And then Wall Street compensation in the casino explodes at the same time that the size of the gambling parlor goes to $600 trillion. Uh, Wall Street's bet if we can take $600 trillion in risk and take maybe a billion or two off of each trillion and we'll be rich and no one will know the difference. Uh, I understand, Senator Cantwell, that current legislation still legalizes this casino? That's absolutely correct. And we are uh, trying to uh, introduce legislation next week that would close that loophole. Uh, but even as we've talked to some of our colleagues, they've said this is really complex and they want to know more about it. But the bottom line is, if the federal government doesn't regulate this, at least you should allow the states who insurance commissioners want to know that this is an insurance tool and that it really complies with how to financially secure risk, they should allow the states to do their job. But that's what the loophole was in 2000. The loophole prevented states from also having any oversight and regulation in what is really gambling. And that's what we need to change. We need regulators to do their job. We need to protect the American economy. And we need capital to flow 
to things other than just exotic financial tools. What's wrong with a system where all the, the vast majority of the national capital is taken from the real economy and used as a giant speculation toy on Wall Street? I mean, the reality is uh, if this TV show doesn't work out, I could go make a small fortune uh, with these gambling chips, and, and quite honestly, so could you. And then we could just become consumers. We pay a lot in taxes. I could hire some. I could hire some people to, to build me a house. What's wrong with well, that? Well, this is well. This is this is what's made the American economy sick these toxic financial tools and what will make America well again in an information age economy where there's lots of products and services to be created is to have that capital flow to those new technologies whether it's green energy or the next innovation in software uh, you know we in the Northwest we build things like airplanes and software and make coffee and and people build houses and we ought to have capital flowing to those banks and institutions instead of cooking up the latest uh, financial scheme to whitewash through uh, the Wall Street financial tools that make a few people wealthy. I mean, I'm telling you, we can make a lot of money. I, I, you want to think about this. Uh, the, the Commodity Futures Modernization Act in 2000 legalized gambling with the following paragraph. Uh, again, the exemption, as I'm learning new to this, is apparently the rule when it comes to legislation. And C the CFMA passed in 2000 under President Clinton, which legalized this gambling. Uh, it says this chapter shall supersede and preempt the application of any state or local law. This is the preemption that prohibits or regulates gaming or the operation of buckets. Shops. In other words, if there's a state law that outlaws gambling, it does not apply to this type of gambling. So they acknowledge that this is a gambling act and then wrote an exemption in saying this kind of gambling is legal. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And so what happened is in the housing market, while they were making housing loans that probably were a little bit risky, they said, well, we're going to back them up with these new derivatives. And yet those tools didn't have any capital really behind them or the transparency to set the value of those derivatives. So consequently, it was a house of cards. And as we know, that house of cards collapsed. Uh, well, I think it was most, I think most people in this country thought after this happened, the rules would be changed and, and there would be more protection for taxpayers. What is stunning, I think, to people a year later, I was talking to Andrew Ross Sorkin yesterday who wrote the book Too Big to Fail, and what everybody that I talked to is stunned that it is so difficult to solve this problem when obviously the legalized gambling, the move from 80 trillion to 600 trillion, an incentive system where he who takes the most risk makes the most money and there is no downside, and that is a difficult thing to accomplish. Is that because Larry Summers was, again, there at the beginning in 99 with this law and is currently advising the president is that a relevant is that a relevant fact well I think you know we need to pass a law that says if you do off book accounting schemes and you manipulate the market like Enron did with energy you ought to go to jail and I think we need to have a very bright line so that if it's the next financial tool that someone cooks up that they know that the penalty is going to be stiff I hate to think that someone is so cynical as to say we're going to have a, a, a recovery in the United States by getting Wall Street healthy and that in and of itself will be the key. You will not have a healthy Wall Street. You will have a reoccurrence of this event again if you do not close these loopholes. Uh, uh, Brooksley Bourne was the force. There are four people in the room if you look at the Frontline documentary which does such a good job of describing how this legalized gambling came to be. Uh, and again, Arthur Levitt uh, who ran the SEC who did great Great work for transparency, by the way, who's a big transparency advocate, Reg FD, uh, but was in favor of this. Larry Summers, who was the Treasury Secretary. Uh, Bob Rubin, who had been the pre Treasury Secretary prior and was the former CEO of Goldman Sachs himself. These three men told the President it's okay to proceed with a piece of legislation that legalizes this type of gambling. Brooksley Bourne was the fourth person in the room uh, who was the former head of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission saying, this is crazy. You're legalizing gambling I'd like to play a, a piece of a, so a soundbite from Brooks Lee Bourne on the insanity of legalizing this type of gambling what was it that was uh, in this market that had to be hidden why did it have to be a completely dark market so it made me very suspicious and troubled why, why are they so anxious to keep this market off of an exchange? Why, why is Wall Street so aggressively lobbying to, to avoid the transparency uh, that we all deserve? Well, the titans of Wall Street's power should stop at the door of the White House. 
and the White House should be aggressive at saying they are going to aid closing these loopholes and making sure that capital flows to the market of products and services that really will strengthen our great U.S. economy. But if we continue to have a lax attitude, then the millions of dollars that are being spent on Capitol Hill by the financial industry to keep these loopholes open are going to be successful. So we need uh, the White House to weigh in and to be strong and to be forceful. And uh, we have yet to see whether that is going to be the reality on Capitol Hill. Yep. All right, listen, uh, Senator Cantwell, thank you for your efforts on the Finance Committee. And, and, and if, we can get thank from, you. Yeah, if we can get back from a casino to investment, uh, we can probably go to Mars. So, uh, among other things, cure cancer and have a driverless car. I won't even have to have to do a TV show anymore. Senator, thank you so much. And we're not there yet. Uh, Senator Maria Cantwell, uh, Frontline's documentary, The Warning.